Hello. It has been an upheaval-filled couple of weeks. Maybe not for you. Choose your own upheaval. It has been for me. Um, and for the most part, I've had the studio here in San Francisco shuttered, not quite knowing what to build, not quite knowing what to do with myself. Today, I find myself repairing a handful of things. This all started because <laughs> This sofa of ours is falling apart, and I started sewing these patches onto it. Why not? So here we are, doing something that relates to a sensibility of mine, which is that I genuinely dislike shopping, consuming. I have a real fondness for quality things that last a long time and not having a lot of them. This leads to a wardrobe of worn out clothing. And right now it has me leaning into a Japanese tradition, practice, sensibility, to use that word again, called sashiko. Like a not quite curious enough person, I've been pronouncing it wrong, sashiko. Which relates to patching and repairing worn things in such a way that celebrates the repair. Um, and I have, several pairs of jeans that are really falling apart. So I am piecing them back together in such a way that I hope uh, by the end of this project, I like them as much as I did before I started. Better, hey. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure he benefited. <laughs> um, you'll appreciate what I'm up to, Miles. Something you've been aware of for a long time, which is sashiko. Yeah. I wish I had a variety of fabrics. To really lean into it, you're using whatever scrap fabric happens to be in the bin. Maybe. I'm a little pessimistic that I would find a pattern I love. But maybe. Maybe. I started this patch earlier today. There will be more coming. Um, I have a small collection of fabrics uh, that I've saved over the years. This came from, what did this come from? Yeah, a Japanese uh, futon cover that I altered to fit our bed. It's a really nice uh, indigo denim. And I cut a patch, I folded the edges, I ironed the edges, I used uh, spray adhesive to place it while I was wearing the jeans, because these jeans are pretty darn dimensional. And uh, I'm sewing the edges, uh, and then I'm gonna try, try something I've never done before, which is common with sashiko, uh, which is to sew a pattern into the middle that not only strengthens it, but uh, I guess you could say, as opposed to trying to hide the repair, we are going to celebrate the repair and even call attention to it through some patterned stitching. I should measure out a pattern before I start stitching. China marker. Will China marker wash out of fabric? This is not a flat surface, making it a little tricky to make a geometric pattern. A small little orange X stitch. This is gonna take forever. Does China marker wash? No. I get, I'm not sure why I questioned that. It is a grease pen. My sewing skills are rudimentary at best. My mother was a remarkable maker of clothing. 
A little side project of mine lately has been editing my father's Super 8 home movies. And my sisters have pointed out to me that almost all the clothes that my mother wore in the late 50s and early 60s, and most of the clothes that my sisters wore at that time, she had made. So I have to believe that whatever abilities I have to sew likely come simply from watching her work over the years. This is a little rougher than I had imagined it. However, there is beauty and desirable qualities to be found in any effort at making, I believe. The alternative is manufacturing processes that are invisible, which we see more and more of. An iPhone shows no indication of human labor, human design, if you take the time to think about it. This patch certainly shows human labor and human flaws, something I am more and more interested in. And there we have it. I'm not entirely sure that this china marker is a desirable quality. A solvent would remove that, possibly basic rubbing alcohol. Okay then, if I do this another five times, been at this for the better part of the day. My fingers hurt and my neck hurts, but progress is being made. It's been a very slow and meditative process. Honestly, exactly what I was looking for today. And with time to think, I have thoughts. I have observations. The first of which is that it was exactly a year ago that I built a garden bench 
and used it as an excuse to explore the Japanese craft of kintsugi. And it is a close cousin to what's going on today. It is the mending of broken pottery with a lacquer infused with gold or silver. So it is also a process which transforms a damaged object into something new to be appreciated and experienced in a new way. As is often my habit, I am primarily focused on the mechanics of these processes. There's also plenty to be observed about the symbolism and lessons lurking in these processes, the fragility of life, accepting the imperfections of life, becoming stronger from our wounds. The other relates to what I have to imagine is the ancient origins of, I'm going to use the word practice, of this practice, which is that of actual workwear and fabric actually being worn and damaged over time, and the genuine practice of repairing that fabric with whatever patching material and thread is available at the moment that that repair is taking place. So this work today suffers from a self-conscious emulation of a more organic routine. I am now many steps removed from the original workflow that spawned this craft. I began the day by attempting to create a Sashigo style patch from my really relatively limited knowledge of the practice. As the day wore on and I became increasingly bored, increasingly fatigued, increasingly uncomfortable, I became less and less someone attempting to create Sashigo mended fabric and more someone who simply needed their pants mended. And not surprisingly, the work done under that mode of operation I consider more successful. All in all, the ingredients which I found to be most advantageous for this exercise were all quintessentially human ones. Which makes me think that while I truly can't claim to know what our fast approaching AI driven robot overlords are going to bring to the table, I do not believe that it will be that right there. Thank you.